formula that has the number one doctor-recommended medicine approved to both prevent and relieve heartburn. It works in as little as 15 minutes and lasts. New Zantac 360. Mount Everest. Holy cow, this is big. But now, I have a giant decision to make. What color do I accent this room? Himalayan white? Hmm. Caribbean blue? Ooh, or sandstone red? Find your inspiration with the gallery app from Dish and choose from over a hundred beautiful, relaxing scenes. Rainforest green it is. Oh, he likes it too. Watch My Lottery Dream Home, Fridays at 9 on HGTV. Someone broke into her home, abducted her, took the van up to the end of this logging road and killed her. People in Craig were shocked. There was no more unlikely murder victim than Lori Waterman. Craig is a very small place. You don't lock your front door. You don't lock your car doors. And the shift from being absolutely safe to one of my friends got abducted from her house it increased tremendous fear. While we were investigating the murder, I was doing kind of the fictional, well, who could have done this? What do I know about this? What connections do I have that would lead me to some avenue of investigation? I started to chart things out with a yellow legal pad to build a map of the relationship that Lori Waterman had. A good rule of thumb is usually a murder victim knows who kills them. Oftentimes it turns out to be uh, the people they expect least, people they live with, people who know them well. In the Waterman house was Doc Waterman, Lori Waterman, and Rochelle Waterman. Doc Waterman was number one on our suspect list because he was married to Lori Waterman. Small towns are a hotbed for rumors of all kind. So everything that everyone remembered they heard about Doc Waterman became something to talk about. Rumors started popping up about possible motives for Doc and his relationship with at least one other woman in town. You have somebody new in your life and you want to move on, we want to get rid of a spouse. It's a, definitely a motive to kill somebody. He was well respected in the town. Perhaps he thought it would look better if he became a widower than if he divorced his wife. But Mr. Waterman wasn't in town over the weekend when she disappeared and was murdered. And it would have been extremely difficult for him to go from Juno back to Craig, commit this crime, get back to Juno without him knowing but that doesn't mean he couldn't have hired someone to kill his wife. That's, you know, the perfect alibi. I, I wasn't in town, so I couldn't have done it. Doc Waterman was rumored to be having affairs. We took them into account. We investigated them by talking to the people that were involved. But there was no evidence whatsoever of an affair and no evidence whatsoever of Doc Waterman hiring someone to kill Lori so you can eliminate that. Next, I uh, thought about her, her older son but knew that, that he was in college on the other side of the country. And then he thought about Rochelle and I knew that Rochelle had changed dramatically in her appearance and behavior over the last year including hanging out with a, a couple of scary looking guys and they were Jason Arant and Brian Riddell being a policeman in a small town I do my business by knowing everybody and being in everybody's business 
as acquaintances of Rochelle, Jason Arant and Brian Riddell were high on our list of people to talk to and try to eliminate as suspects. Obviously, Bob knew these people a lot better than I did. Most of the information is what I got from him. Jason and Brian, they were 25. They'd been friends since about their teenage years. Jason's mom worked at the police department, and I talked to her almost every day. Bob Klaus knew Jason Arant was kind of a society dropout. He worked as a janitor in a small school in Klawa, but he spent most of his time in his parents' basement where he lived, playing video games, drinking, smoking pot. He was a bit of a burnout. Brian Riddell grew up in a subdivision of Thorn Bay that doesn't have running water, and his father was a, a survivalist, a theorist of, that the world was going to end and he was going to be ready. They lived a pretty hard scrabble kind of existence. Bob Klaus and the police knew that the summer before her junior year in, in high school, Rochelle took a job at a computer store, and her boss was Brian Riddell. Rochelle got involved with Brian and his friends in playing Dungeons and Dragons. And she began to date one of Brian's friends, Jason Arant. He was about 25 at the time. And Rochelle Waterman is a 16-year-old high school kid. There was some tension in the family that uh, Bob was aware of. Problems with uh, Rochelle and Lori over Rochelle's boyfriend. Bob's telling me about Brian and Jason and what he knows and it just seemed like a very good place to start with these two and so we need to get some basic information about where they were what they were doing over the weekend and and go from there we contacted jason Rant by telephone at his mom's house and he almost immediately came to the trooper station to talk to us we tried to establish what his alibi was going to be the night Lori Waterman was murdered. He said that he had been watching a, a movies with Brian Riddell. We asked, well, what movie did you watch? Well, we just watched The Princess Bride over and over. Well, I like The Princess Bride as much as the next guy. I'm not going to watch it eight times in a row in 12 hours. You know, nobody does that. As we were talking to Jason, Two troopers went out to talk to Brian Riddell. Brian Riddell was a, a huge man with a bushy hairdo and a big beard. And what the trooper discovered was that Brian Riddell had uh, shaved his big bushy beard and shaved his, his uh, distinctive hair. That was a big red flag. That's a suspect acting like a suspect. He told us that he had been with Jason and that he'd gone home that night and slept at home so immediately right there we have some contradictions about who was with whom when they're essentially they're using each other as their own alibi but they got the alibi wrong they're not saying the same thing bob and i are like something's up here did they love each other did they hate each other what was the problem saturday cold justice is new she loved the thing she loved the day she loved to have fun deborah was attacked in her home bludgeoned and stabbed to death my mom was my best friend only oxygen true crime has new episodes of cold justice saturdays at eight oxygen true crime knows you can't get enough dateline so we created a new series just for you dateline unforgettable new tuesdays Domino's new oven baked dips are so new that we made a new commercial about their newness. Try new flavors like our cheesy marinara, baked apple, or hot melty five cheese with our not new but still delicious twists. Carry out Domino's new oven baked dips and twist combos or any three topping pizzas for $7.99 each. Like pulsing electric shocks, sharp stabbing pains, or an intense burning sensation. What is this nightmare? It's how some people describe shingles. A painful, blistering rash that can interrupt your life for weeks. Forget social events and weekend getaways. If you've had chickenpox, the virus that causes shingles is already inside of you. If you're 50 years or older, ask your doctor or pharmacist about shingles. Hey, uh, I didn't order any pizza. Jake from State Farm. After you saved me so much dough on insurance with that Parker promo, 
and devised a promo for you. Here's the deal, Parker. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Yeah, right. Pepperoni pockets, an atomic brownie, cuckoo crusty. There's no promo, it's just great rates. And a cider ranch. You're the man, man. And you want the real deal? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Am I starting the next chapter? Am I about to be called Mommy? Am I pregnant? First response detects not one, but all forms of the pregnancy hormone. With a test that gives results six days before your missed period, first response is the answer. <clears throat> Walmart's Deals for Days isn't over yet. This Cyber Monday is your last chance to score big online starting Sunday night. Don't miss out on Walmart's Deals for Days. Good Girl, Feminine Fragrance by Carolina Herrera. Black psoriasis, the burning, itching, the pain. Emerge Tremphiant. With Tremphia, adults with moderate to severe black psoriasis can uncover clearer skin and improve symptoms at 16 weeks. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Emerge Tremphiant with Tremphia. Ask your doctor about Tremphia today. This Thanksgiving, I've always wanted to do this. Grab the family. Enjoy the feast. And start the celebration. That sounds awesome. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now playing PG-13. Hey, During the investigation into Lori Waterman's murder, we interviewed Jason Arand and... Ryan Riddell, who were Rochelle's close friends, the two alibis, or the alibi for the night Lori Waterman was murdered, just didn't match at all. But we decided we just didn't have enough information at the time, so let's keep working this case. The next day, an emergency call came in from the Klawak school that Jason Durant had been attacked by a, a man in the parking lot. Bob and I, we run over there, we contact Jason, start talking to him. Jason described tall, big, muscular man dressed in black wearing a hood. And that this person had told him to stay away from Rochelle or something bad would happen. There were several other witnesses there. No one else saw this mystery person. And also, Jason had what appeared to be a self-inflicted scratch on his throat. And it immediately becomes apparent to me that this is phony. He's making this up. But why would you do that? It's just very strange. We took Jason Rant back to the Craig Police Department. Jason Rant was so clearly hiding things and lying about being attacked at the school and i knew he was connected to lori waterman's murder this is pretty clearly a person just trying to muddy the investigation we start asking some very pointed questions we start getting a little more accusatory and we uh we basically tell him you know this assault thing didn't happen you made it up and we think you're involved with, with the murder of Lori Waterman. And Jason said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll come clean. He just says, yeah, I know who did this. He tells us that Brian is the one who killed Lori. And the reason that this happened was because of Rochelle. Per Jason, Rochelle was in real trouble. She was being abused physically by her mom which is so implausible as to be laughable, except that he acted on this information as if it was real. 
I knew Rochelle Waterman. She was a bright kid and she was witty and funny and, and very smart. And then I saw as she became a teenager, she changed. Rochelle was starting to kind of rebel at that time. And I remember after that volleyball game when Rochelle put on like the goth type stuff, I kind of looked at Lori and she kind of looked at me and rolled her eyes. It was like, you know, what can you do? One of those. I knew Rochelle was also using technology as teenagers do. Police knew that Rochelle had a blog called My Crappy Life. And she referred to Craig, Alaska as Hell, Alaska. I had allegations of abuse by Rochelle towards Lori. I didn't know if uh, she actually was getting abused or this was just a teenager not getting along with her mother and was acting out. But Jason believed Rochelle. She presents as a damsel in distress with a problem. She fed both Jason and Brian full of these stories of this abuse and it got Jason riled up to the point where he enlisted his best friend to kill Lori. Jason told us that Brian had played the big role in this killing her mother and that Jason was just the driver. And when asked whether he would wear a wire, Jason agreed. Right away. So we had to go in front of the judge, get the warrant. Alaska is called a class warrant. It allows police to record somebody without their knowledge. Jason was going to go physically to Brian Riddell's location and talk to him about what happened. We make arrangements and then brief up Jason on how to act and behave while this is going on. We make the initial contact. Jason doesn't do it what we tell him and he stands right next to a television we can't hear what's going on so we don't get a lot of information they talk on the wire for a little bit and then got in a car and started driving still talking on the wire we were trying to follow them in another vehicle and listen to what was actually said they talk about their own alibi and saying the same thing while this is going on, Brian did make some admissions about uh, killing Lori. Well, at this point, we decided to let's let's go hit Brian up right away and and talk to him. And we confronted Brian Riddell, questioning him and. Yeah, he admits to doing it, carrying out the murder of Lori Waterman. Brian Riddell tells us that Jason was in on it. And Jason had told him that Lori was abusing Rochelle, and that was the motivation behind wanting to do this, that they were going to save Rochelle from her mother. Jason is a direct physical accomplice. When he believed life was so bad for Rochelle that he arranged with his buddy to fix that problem. Well, he's on your sixth, Nemo. They need customized car insurance from Liberty Mutual. So they only pay for what they need. We are not getting you a helicopter. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. delivery online instead of adding surprise fees like other delivery apps we're adding 50 million dollars in surprise frees camera's a little close to that lava cake isn't it that's better order domino's delivery online and you might get more than you expect with one of these surprise frees even the smallest surprise 